Shalom. This is this is Rabbi Maurice Sklar, and this is our daily Beit Rafa service, House of Healing, and I want to welcome you and um, all the dear ones. That's what I that's what I call you. Those that have joined with us in this online congregation, if you will, but it's also it's also a prophetic place, it's a place of healing, it's a place of restoration, it's a place of revival. I just believe God is pouring out his spirit. There's a fresh fire. There's, it seems like every day it gets stronger and stronger. Well, hello, Ina Ruth and Barb, and some of you were on with, uh, with us at the healing rooms, and Ricky and Ginger, or Ginger, I know, and Hello, hello, yes, Yuli, welcome, welcome back. I haven't seen you in a couple of days. Emmanuel, Beusus, hello, hello, Rabbi Sklar, Beit Rafa family. I, even though I haven't seen you in person yet, I feel closer. I feel so close to you. I just love you guys. Allegra, I saw you. Allegra Spalding, you were also on our prayer time, and Katrina Titanen my midnight sun sister in Finland, <laughs> the land of the midnight sun. <laughs> Ina Ruth Bogus Summers, yes, from Baton Rouge. I already said hello to you, but I like your name, so I said it again. Kathy Childress, hello, and Barb, yes. Christine Brown, shalom, dear. Good that you're here. God bless you, Roy and Cindy Key, my my Texas friends, we are still, I feel very connected to the uh, end time handmaidens and servants, the, the, uh, the bridal company that, uh, that Sister Gwen Shaw founded. Of course, she's gonna be with the Lord, but they're, they're faithful ones. And I'm so glad to have you here, Roy. And uh, yes, the Lord just said to me to tell you, Roy, that uh, this, <coughs> this, uh, there's been an ongoing attack. I don't. I don't know what's going on specifically, but there's just been an assignment against you, uh, particularly the last eight months or so. And God has tonight. It's broken. It's broken, and uh, it's going to. And God's going to open up, open up the the uh, the river of supply for you. It's like I see a bottleneck, and God just. He's just bursting in force. So he, he gave you a word, you know, even the greeting can be a good thing. The gifts of the Spirit are welcome anytime. Hello, Kathy. Hello, everyone. Barb, yes. And Imelda, welcome. You, you've been on every day with us. Bless you. Wow. Rebecca, hello. And Joanne, hello, honey. Yes. Hello, my brother, Roy and Linda. Her in the A, yes, I saw you on our prayer uh, with the healing rooms. And Cheryl, bless you. Hallelujah. You are, you're just so faithful and you always write encouraging things. I, it really touches me. I read every, every, every post. I read, I pray for you every night around about 1030, somewhere in that area before I go, go to bed and hallelujah. Julie Gorman, bless you, and Linda Newton from Australia, and Lizzie Liz Bahari, good evening. Is that your real name? I don't think, I don't know. What's your real name if that's not? I love Lizzie Liz, that's cute. Donald Hendricks, hello, welcome brother. And John Milkey, yes, hallelujah. And Maria Dell, welcome. And Marilyn Downs, welcome sister, and Sean Howell, good ever, <laughs> amen, good ever, ever, ever good, uh, praise God, hallelujah, yeah, Roy, things are going to open up, as you, even as you get into the summer, go have a, don't tell anybody, but go have one of those water burgers and think of me, because we used to, he, they, I don't know why, now, I don't, of course, I don't eat much junk food anymore, but they have this amazing water burger there in Lubbock. I think it's Lubbock, Texas. My God, it was good. It was something about Texas. I love Texas. 
I guess I'm hungry, maybe. That's probably why I thought of that. Hello, Cindy and Alexis and Corinne. I received your email and I'm praying. Let's do it right now. We need to pray for together for Corinne's daughter. I believe her name is Brooke and she is in, uh, she's, she's been attacked with depression and very gifted young lady studying for her doctorate, uh, got attacked and got disillusioned, got hurt probably. Father, we lift up Brooke Peterson to you. Oh, Father, have mercy on her and rescue her. Let her know how good you are. Break through, break through the bitterness and the darkness and the anger. Lord, we, yes, we take authority together we take authority over a spirit of depression and, and, and anger and bitterness. Go, loose her, let her, loose her mind and her emotions. And Father, send the right person to her that can minister to her, the right labor, Lord. Bring her out. Bring her out of that darkness and despair. Hallelujah. And there's others that are suffering. Just Even the dear ones, you come in on every day and sometimes you just feel like you're hanging on. Like a, you know, like on the edge of, of of a rock face, and you're just holding on. Lord, just lift, lift that one up. Lift those that are suffering with heaviness and depression and being attacked, just constant attack of lies. Those are all lies of the devil, beloved, dear ones. Don't receive that. That's not true. You just stay. You stay hooked in. You stay in, hooked in right here. And believe me, if I can be here today and have hope again, so can you and you will. You're, you're going to get through this and you're coming out the side, other side, not smelling a smoke. He, he's here. He's here. He's the God of all hope. Just, Lord, just lift off all that junk off you right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Ooh, I feel the... I feel that fire that was on that broadcast. Listen, I got to brag a little bit. Can I brag on our community here, the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria? We are having, a, a coming up to Pentecost, which is very close now. I think we're in the 46th day of counting the Omer uh, in the Jewish calendar. And we're coming up to number 50, hallelujah. And I have anticipation. Hallelujah. Pentecost is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I like the way, uh, I like the way Catherine Coleman, well, she would say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. And, and Pastor Benny would say, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. But he is Ruach HaKodesh, the precious spirit that is holy. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so excited today. I'm, I'm really stirred up. I, you know, I'm really happy. For the first time in my life, I can say, I, I don't have to just faith it. You know what I mean? You'll get there. Just, you know what? You faith it until you make it in a way. It, if you're not feeling good, you know what? Those feelings are subject to change. That's just the outside. That's the outer man. That's, but sometimes, hallelujah, you just keep sowing good things. And after a while, it'll put a smile on your face. Yeah. Because there is a good life to be living. He said, I came, Yeshua came to give you life and that more abundantly. It's the devil's giving you all those problems. <laughs> and we just cast him out. He can't stay. It's like a glass of water. I have glass. Now, you, if you fill a glass of water up, say you have ice in it, you pour, pour a nice, uh, say, hot day and you pour a, iced tea, you know, splash in the pool type, refreshing, you know, and you just keep pouring, what happens? It, whatever's in that glass before, the water, or whatever, or, or junk, or mud, or whatever, after a while, it just, it goes, because it has to. Hallelujah. Fill your cup with, with the good things of God. Just immerse yourself in the Word of God, day and night. Just go all in. And we've been doing this. This is day number 70, I believe. 70 days in a row. That's a miracle. 
<laughs> it's a miracle. And you know what? I bet many of you are in a whole lot better place than you were when we started. I sure am. You know, you can't overdose on, on the good medicine of God's word. His word is medicine, hallelujah, to all your flesh. It's good. His healing is, hallelujah, it, hallelujah. Just, just come on people, get happy, like the song, right? Get happy. You, you can be happy even in the midst of storms and trials because it's not going to last. You come out the other side of this and you, you win because the winner's inside of you. God always wins and he lives in you. He's not going to let you fall or fail. He's going to see you through. Let's just keep feeding. And you know what? If you're on that wall, let's climb up and you feel like you're in a tough place. You know what? Let's just climb up to the the ledge it's only a little bit farther let's you know and and even better than that you know they say well let's climb up the rough side of the mountain there was an old black gospel song that Nanny Bugle used to sing which isn't very scriptural is a I'm climbing up the rough side of the mountain but Jesus is on the other side mm. well actually God never said climb up the rough side of the mountain. Jesus said speak to the mountain and blow it into the ocean. <laughs> mountain, get out of my way. I'm coming through. Mountain, be moved. What kind of mountain? These kind of overwhelming uh, circumstances that, we're, that you may be looking at right now. Our God is greater. Remember, there's a, there's a, there's a song about that. I think even from the... <laughs> The California Bethel place or whatever. But you know what? Our God is stronger. Our God is greater. Our God does deliver. And you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. You're not camping there and making your home there. And, you know, God never intended for you to to make your home in the slough of despond. <laughs> right? Old Christian pilgrim's progress right yeah if you're in the slough of despond guess guess what you got off the main road but i'm here to pull you out and i've got i've got the i've got the heavy lifting equipment to do it and and i'm pulling you out right now i'm pulling you out of the miry clay i don't care what it looks like let's get back up and let's get back on the road and let's walk forward walk with me i'll carry you if i need to i don't i don't mind Hallelujah. We've got some heavy spiritual lifting equipment here. I know what it's like. And I know it's what it's like to not be in the miry quicksand clay. So let's pull you out. You start looking up. You start looking to Jesus. Jesus has hope for you. He, yes, the sun will come out tomorrow. <laughs> you know, you don't, you're not, this isn't the end. And don't you dare kill yourself or take pills or jump off a building or anything like that. No, you're not in ruin. It's not God. It says even if weeping endures for night, someone someone has been in a, just a terrible grief. and God is delivering you. There's a lot of this. Oh, man. And woman, <laughs> rise up. Rise up, woman, thou art loosed. T.D. Jakes would say. You're loosed. You're loosed from that. Are, those are lies. I had a dear friend of mine I talked to last night for quite some time. And he's, he was the man that led me to the Lord when I was 13 years old at a music camp. I mean, he was coming out of the Jesus movement. His name's Eric. Coming out of the, I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to tell you anymore. That's all you need to know. He, he's, he's, he's my friend and I don't, you know, Friends don't share everything, don't do they? But anyway, you know, he's been in a rough, he's had a lot, a lot of difficulties and storms and, and but you know what, I just, just encouraged him and I literally felt, I, I, I mean, I heard it in his voice when the joy came back into his voice. And, and, and he began to think, think right. See, it's all up here. The battle's in your head. Yeah, it's all up here. 
fill your mind with the truth of God's word. I didn't know I was going to spend this much time. I'm just, I'm just exhorting you right now. That's all right. I'm encouraging you. But most of all, you know, even the four lepers, they were, they, they, they were starving just like uh, Israel was in famine, Jerusalem. They, they, they were out, but they were outside, they were outside the walls. I mean, the, the, nobody wanted them. They were, you talk about being rejected. And they finally, one of them says to the other, why sit we here till we die? You know, uh, there's food over in the enemy's camp. There's provision there. They're eating their children in here. Uh, if we just sit here, we're going to die. Anyway, let's go where there's, let's go forward. And they got up and they began to walk. That's when you do what you know. You see, you have to put it into action. That's when God starts to move for you. If you sit there and feel sorry for yourself and just just sink in the mire, you know what? God can't get to you with his miracle power until you say, you know what? I'm going to get up. I'm not going to I'm not going to stay in this in in this despair anymore. Get up. And they walk those those poor poor uh, poor feeble sick Israelite lepers began to walk because Elijah had prophesied by this time tomorrow you're gonna get you'll 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 have all the bread you need it won't, won't cost you but some pennies you know very very if God the, the king or whoever was with these if God no the one whoever responded I can't remember he said if God would open the windows of heaven that couldn't happen he said you watch you'll see it but you won't eat of it god doesn't like it when we don't believe believe you have to believe god's faithful and he's going to be good to you and he's going to provide for you and he's even the god of provision and famine in despair in in weakness when you're at your end hallelujah there's never an end god will god will give you He'll deliver you. He'll 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 send something. He'll he'll get to you because you you're his child and you matter to him. So anyway, but uh, uh, <clears throat> so they went forward, right? They went forward, and what happened? God's armies went with him. The chariots of fire, Elisha, <laughs> Elijah. You know, the, the, the armies of the Lord of hosts started marching and running with them. They didn't see it. They just thought they were the, the lepers. But they heard, it says in the enemy's camp, they heard a rumbling and an earthquake. And a, it sounded like the galloping of, of the horses of war coming. Oh, no. They're coming to get us. And, and they fled and they left all the goodies spoils and what these God uses what we think is very small to do big miracles so what little you can do do what little you have so whatever it is you can do God hooks up with that and that's particularly true with his end time this end time mantles that are being released right now god's gonna use the foolish things he's gonna use the least of these he's raising people up out of obscurity i mean you know look i mean those that could never have done anything but god came and hallelujah he'll make a champion out of you <laughs> he'll, he'll do his greatest miracles to those because you know what god gets all the glory because there's one thing for sure. You know, it wasn't you that did it. It must be him. So I'm just encouraging a few of you needed uh, a shot of Holy Ghost encouragement adrenaline. You just needed a boost right now. So that was just for you, dear ones. Just for you. All right. Well, let's see. What am I doing today? Yes. 
I'm going to try to stay on track. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we're going to uh, get into, uh, we're going to finish the second half of, uh, or the second part, we say part two, of, of uh, uh, from the Revelations of Midnight Hour. It's, it's watch and pray, spiritual fitness for the midnight hour. And we talked about speaking the promises of God, but there's some other things. How do you get to a place where, where you have consistent, solid victory on steady ground going forward? How do you do that? You got to get strong to do that. And not in yourself, but the Bible says, be strong. Paul said, be strong in the strength of the Lord and put on that armor of God. So we're going to get into some of that. I want to, yeah, let me put some music on. We're going to, uh, hallelujah. Hope you're doing good. I feel so good and the fire of God's all over me again. There's been an, I tell you, we're coming up to Pentecost and I wouldn't be surprised at all if this was the big one, Elizabeth. <laughs> it's the big one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, not that way. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this is, this is going to be the birth of the seven times more than the first century church. I mean, the grand finale, we're going to see it, and it's going to be so dramatic. Now, I know, you know, I don't like, I, I don't like, I, I've heard it a lot, especially in the last 10 years or so, you know, the carrot in front of the the, the the donkey, you know. Okay, it's coming, the big one. Oh, it's coming, it's coming. But it is coming. God warned us for 120 years the judgment's coming, didn't he? And he's told us Jesus is coming. And, you know, you can have hope even if you don't, even if all we do is see more, you know, shakings, which you're going to see. We're going to have shakings. Oh, yeah. And we're going to have glory. And they're both coming down at the same time. They're coming upon us and overtaking us. But hallelujah, just like Noah said, he sang, you know, according to Pastor Jerry Zirkel, my pastor years ago, the country is a foolish, beautiful psalmist that we broke an arrow. I mean, he was a faith man and he put that in me too. And was the father of the psalmist ministry. You know, God took me, I'm a, you know, trained concert violinist, uh, Juilliard, Curtis, great schools, I, you know, all that. You know what he did with me? He brought me to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and this little church in Broken Arrow with a man that sang David Ingalls songs, and he would play three chords. And he had me sit down there for a year. That was 1990. And he'd say, mm, you know what Noah sings? He says, I'd rather be on the inside looking out than on the outside looking in. Well, come on in. Come on in. The water's fine. Come on in to the place of refuge. The Goshens of God are on the earth right now. You just got to hear God and find where you're supposed to be. Make sure you're where you're supposed to be. That's all. Because there's some, there's, there's things coming down the pike that <clears throat> the Lord wouldn't be specific. I asked him today, I said, well, Lord, you can tell me exactly what's coming would you he didn't i didn't hear anything and finally i just all i heard was one word i heard earthquake i heard big earthquake now, i don't know where it is i hope it's not here in california but you know what even if it is god will protect me i really believe that god will protect me until my work is done and then if i get to leave the planet hallelujah are you, all you get, all you do is just eliminate all, every, I mean, I just change planets. I, I just step out and there I am with God in perfection. So I got a win-win. To die is gain. To stay here is more important and necessary. He said, for you. And I tell you what, I'm, I've fallen in love with the dear ones. It's all right if I just flow a little bit. I, I'm not in a hurry. You know, I, I was so, after 30 years of getting the pastors or the leaders Holy Ghost vaudeville hook, get off my platform. <laughs> you have, play your two songs. 
<laughs> three songs. Or, yes, we want you to have everything. We want everything. You have 22 minutes. <laughs> it's very hard to do a lot. But right now, you know what? The, I started praising God. You know why? I have a t free TV studio with worldwide coverage whenever I want. For free! You know, hey, for us over 50s, which we are, that's, you know, only a few could get on television at all, much less go around the world. Just to make a long, when I was a kid, just to make a long distance phone call was expensive. You had to watch your time, you know, 10 minutes, don't do it, you know, or whatever. Now, hallelujah, communication explosion. I'm going to use it for the gospel. And I tell you what, there's no excuse for me being lazy and sitting around, especially and 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 be stuck in the mire and oh, so everything is the, it's the end times is all over. It's all over. No, this is exciting. This is the grand finale. God is showing up in the earth, and He's doing great things through me and you right now. Today is a good day to be alive. This is a good time. Can't you see the millions coming to the Lord? Lord, open their eyes so that they can see more than all the, the slime and the smoke and darkness of the devil. Well, you know what? Most of you, the devil just leaves you alone because you've, you've, you've programmed your, he's programmed it in so long, they're just tapes running in your head, you know, over and over. Oh, I can't do it. It's all over. I'm a failure. I'm a, no, no, you're not. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Violent Avenger. <laughs> Excuse me. I better stop. Oh, I mean, I really, I, I just, Full, I feel like I could do the Snoopy dance right now. I mean, actually, I feel so good. And I pray to make God make you feel good. Be encouraged tonight. There's hope, even for you. Yes. And there is hope, and things will get better. So I'm prophesying. I'm just speaking life over you. No penalty for that, is there? Oh, you're trying to manipulate. No. Uh -uh. I'm not... First of all, I'm not good at it. Uh, if I ever try to do it, I usually end up, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about trying to get something. I'm not trying to get anything out of you. I'm trying to put something into you. I am here to give to you the best heavenly meal I can possibly prepare. And I've gotten it to be a good cook over the years, a chef, you know, I've practiced. I'm a practicing Jew, even as a minister. Hallelujah. I practice and practice and practice till I get better at it. You know, if you practice something right, you, you'll master it after a while. Hallelujah. And you know what? God is also reproducing. That's He's in the reproduction business. He wants you to do just what I'm doing. I, we need all of us, all hands on deck. We, all of us, this is the time of the believer rising up and all of us together. God's gonna put mighty anointings on homeless uh, veterans that lost their mind in the desert storm or something in LA. He's putting, he's, he, he's just taking anybody, get out there and let me use your mouth. And after a while you get better at it, right? <laughs> all right, now, I'm gonna try to start. Praise the Lord. It's only 30, 33 minutes of freewheeling there. But, but hallelujah, some of you got set free, and that's worth it. I'm after your transformation. It's, and God in me is after that, too. All right, so anyway, I want to tell you, I went down to our studio. We have a, we have a, a studio... Like, it's like an apartment, it's a, but it's it's a place where we're we're setting up, and maybe we'll do some some TV out of there, and it's larger. Anyway, so it's in the garage. We have a big 
this big garage. So anyway, I'm down there. All the CDs are down there. Devora helps me with the, you know, the orders and stuff. The, I saw this CD and I thought, wow, I need to tell people because I have this on my uh, website. This is my friend here, Graham Walsh, who is uh, Graham and Sabrina are giants in the faith. And uh, they've walked with God a long time. They're from New Zealand. And this, this CD is, he, he has that, you know, a, that New Zealand accent, you know. But he narrates, this is an amazing healing uh, CD. I do an a improvisation, a couple of hymns to begin. And then I do something at the end, about three minutes. And I'm kind of like the book ends. And then, hallelujah, you know who's playing? Julie Meyer. Julie Meyer is here with us too at the Apostolic Center. She was praying, she and Walt, uh, today, right before at five. But he's reading these scriptures and it's a wonderful thing to sleep to because it's very, very placid and it's so peaceful and he pauses. And that soft, that, that, that uh, you know, British, accent he's got a wonderful narr narration voice he works so hard this cd though is just just putting the word mainlining it right into your inner man and you can put that on and it carries also i believe the anointing that's over the glory that's over the uh where we are and we're in revival here i mean re the real thing i mean miracle revival and I want to brag a little bit. So anyway, go to my website and get this. And uh, we we're so we we're so into Graham and Sabrina. We try we we love them. They're our friends. We were just over there a couple of days ago. But uh, this is the word, and 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 it, it'll it'll bless you. I I'd put it on, but you'd end up going into you know. It's just great. You know, maybe you don't, we don't have Dr. John G. Lake praying in for us in person, but the angel, I believe the angel that, well, in fact, I've seen it uh, several times. The angel that was with John Lake is based here. And he comes in and out of the, the prayer time in the healing rooms. And, and he's come about, I'd say eight or 10 times when I've been ministering healing uh, he's even been visited me a few times here in the, uh, but he helps me to flow in healing. But that, I tell you what, hey, get, get this, get this. It'll bless you. Okay. So I'm not trying to sell something, uh, but <clears throat> you know, I wanted to tell you about it. God said, let him know because, and it'll bless Graham and Sabrina as well. All right. So <clears throat> now what am I doing? Oh, music. Well, I'm going to put on my In His Glory music now. This is, <clears throat> I did this with my friends uh, when we, <clears throat> we played for Pastor Benny Hinn as a trio under him for about 20 years. Uh, Bruce uh, Hughes, Cheryl Palmquist and I Originally, this CD <coughs> was uh, uh, was just the two of them. When I first came, they had done this. It was originally called the Master's Healing Touch, and uh, uh, and I put my oh, actually, this is the Master's Healing Touch. I don't think I'm on this one. This is the soundtracks. <laughs> Hold on, just a minute. It's wonderful by itself. But I put my violin on top of it as well. So anyway, I want to put this on. There's healing for you. Just, you know what? When you come on here, I don't care. You can lie down on your couch or your bed. Just relax. But let just soak. Let this wonderful fire and, and, and the water of God just soak. Soak through you, in you. You need to be brainwashed. You need your brain washed out of all the junk and replace it with the atmosphere of heaven, with the pure word of God. Hallelujah. God has miracles for the mind right now. 
He has miracles for the emotions right now. Are you wounded emotionally? I know a good Jewish doctor that can heal you wherever you hurt. And he's sending his healing, anointing, healing power of God into your, through this, through the internet, all the way up into the, all the way up into the satellite space and back down or however it gets to you. Hallelujah. Or through the, the, the it's a miracle, isn't it? I remember when it started, I couldn't do violin lessons because it would distort the sound so bad, but I could even do that now. Wow. So anyway, let God touch you, and don't worry so much about, oh, I'm going to take notes. There is a lot of revelation, but you know what? Just soak. It goes inside. It's your spirit, man, that I'm, I want to feed. God wants to feed you on the inside. That's who you really are. You know, sometimes we think we have to learn like we we learned calculus or physics and, and it's good to take notes and it's good to it's 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 good to to be diligent. But these this is a little bit different in the sense that this is I'm after getting it down inside of you. That's when you change. We've had so much head religion for so long. Shut this thing off and open your heart. Remember that, uh, you know, Jesus of Nazareth. My, I still, it is my favorite Jesus movie. I watch it every Passover time. We watched it. Uh, you know, it's it's the Zeffirelli uh, '70s Jesus film. Yes, he looks very Anglo-Saxon and blue eyes, but I like. I just like it. It's just beautiful. Uh, but is one place he's at the temple, and uh, you know Barabbas, who's played by a young Stacy Keach. You know he comes, he comes over and says, "We're we're ready. We're zealots. We're ready to take over. Just get behind us. We got the swords. We're gonna." And and he goes. Jesus says, "Well, he said, what do we? What what should we do?" And he said, "Love your enemies." <laughs> Whoa, man, far out. <laughs> Love your enemies. Do good to those that hate. He says, he says, what? These people that have murdered our, and you know, that's the story of the Jewish, uh, Jewish history is a terrible thing done, even in the name of Jesus. Oh, but, you know, we're going to break the yoke of Rome off of us. You're the Messiah. Okay, bring the kingdom. We want it now. Yes, we want it now, but God had a different plan. He had to, change our hearts first anyway so he says he said what should we do should we just he said don't judge you mean don't judge these roman murders he says don't judge anyone <laughs> here's a flower no no I, but it's true you know what stay out of the judging business i quit i i i retired from the judgment business. I used to judge everything and everybody all the time. And I was miserable most of the time too, because as you judge, so shall you be judged. You want to know, you know, one of the, the way to stop enemies being able to get to you is when you stop judging. Just don't do it. Don't do it. As you judge, so shall you be judged. Just, just be like me. I just, I just quit. Am I tempted to judge? Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. All the time, especially when you're watching left, right politics. Those. And that woman with her head pulled up with, you know, and boy is tempting, isn't it? Not her head, her skin. Bless her darling heart. Lord, I don't know how darling it is, but Lord, do a miracle. And there is a there is scriptures you can pray like Psalm 107. It's the word of God. I can pray it, right? You know what it says? There's a scripture and it says, "Let our leaders." And I say our leaders that are ungodly. Let their days be few, and let another take their office. <laughs> That's righteous. Lord, put the God. We need to pray for those, but we've got to stay out. See. The devil tempts us, and then we once you get in the judge judging business, you get down in the mud, and you start you get way down in the mud, and then you get all muddy, and the devil's 
wrestle you, you, that's his territory you know what our job is to love let god judge but i can pray powerful prayers like lord remove those if they won't turn then remove them either save them or get them out of the way because this is the grand finale and the train is going through and you're not going to stop it so get out of my way doubt mr devil and all who you put in authority right Boy, I'm just going, going, going. Lord, let me, let, let me do something. I, you know, he said, I'm having fun. I said, okay. You'd be surprised what would come out of your mouth if you get yourself in between a dear one that, that needs help <laughs> and Jesus. And you, all you have to do is just put the hose into the those rivers of living water that's supposed to flow out of your life and just let God flow through your mouth. Go help people. You'll be amazed. You ever you ever you ever witness to somebody? Some of you, oh dear. Well it's time to do that. If you want joy, go witness. I tell you that'll give you joy. Go go anywhere. Start talking about what Jesus did for you. Start 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 ministering to people find my anthem find somebody hurting worse than you and go and help them go and give them give them the word of god that's that's the antidote that's what changes you that's why i'm so strong on i want i want the word of god in you because that's what's that's supernatural that will transform you it's miracle words it's not my words, it's his words. Hallelujah. Don't you want, you know, there's a whole world out there starving and, and you know, uh, thirsting and, and out in the desert of life. Like the David Ingalls song say, it says, uh, I found an oasis of love, old song. It was written for John Osteen's church, the well, Lakewood, it's his Lakewood still, of course, it's the sun now, but uh, Joel, uh, but, but you know what? We gotta keep God's word coming out of our mouths. It's the word of God, it'll set you free. Paul told Timothy, preach the word, preach the word, speak the word only. The centurion said, and my servant shall be healed. But the song uh, said, uh, hey, you on the desert of life, come on in and drink from a cup of a friend. Come on in. Come on in. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yes, I do. He's here. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. I want to brag on the healing rooms, our community here. You know... I came here so hurt and broken and beat up by, by life and especially by ministry, especially by a lot of dear ones that, you know, they didn't always act in love, right? I was hurt, I was broken. I went through a terrible divorce. I was, I, I was just hanging on just hang on by a thread, came here. I'll never forget a time we went out to this, this steak restaurant and all of these apostles. Now they're not just, you know, there's a lot of people that call themselves apostles and they're no more an apostle than I'm, a, I'm an astronaut. They're not apostles, but there is the real thing. There really are apostolic ministries. And I saw something, I saw a different authority. It was five years ago I came here, so I'm just bragging on him because it was so good tonight. And uh, I saw a different wineskin. I saw, yes, there's, there's always, God calls a man and all, someone is always in authority. You, 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 there's all, any, uh, Pastor Jerry used to say, anything with two heads is a freak. You know, <laughs> the buck has to stop. Yes, Jesus is the head of the church and he, he always gives, uh, he gives ministries and he calls men and women. 
that's okay. But this was something I saw all of them yoked together, serving each other. These great, great, mature, strong, powerful, talented, gifted men and women that I just, I, I, and you know, for me, I was so used to, I used, I was so used to the, the slap, you know, I had a very authoritarian type upbringing because of my father and I was attracted to subconsciously, I think. I always wanted my dad's approval, so I could never get it quite. And so I, and then when I was in the church, I was, you know, I was born again, but I was still had this insecurity and fear. And, and I, oh, I want to please the, you know, and it was the man of God, you know, and the woman of God. And that, that authority structure is, is like that. It's a, it's a, a, a triangle. There's the king and all, there's the chief and all the Indians. And most of the time they're held down so that the chief can be super chief, right? Oh, blah, 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 blah. The, yeah, the grand poobah, right? Well, I came here and I saw something different. I saw an upside down triangle. And R R Rabbi Rick was talking and he says, he says, he's talking to me, he said, this is something called apostolic team ministry. I never saw it work before, ever. I've been in hundreds and hundreds of churches, hundreds. You know, the gift to send me, mainly the violin, made room for me. So I, and God called me to, uh, as a psalmist, among other things, to uh, put a prophetic platform out for the apostles on the front lines and God said, I'm going to keep you on the forefront of revival of the move of my spirit until I return because I send Judah first. So he's always got me, had, had me out there, you know, and then usually before, you know. Well, anyway, so this, uh, they're all serving. They're all, they're, they're, I, I, I'm thinking, okay, where's, where's the trap door? Okay, where's the catch? See, that when Israelis meet Christians, for the you know tourists they come to Israel and and they start seeing people love them with the love of Yeshua and tell them we love you you know what they say what do you really want yeah right sure we've had hundreds of years of betrayal we don't believe you <laughs> especially Christians are you kidding we've been tortured and gassed and burned and driven out of countries uh, robbed from by in the name of Jesus for 2,000 years what you're different are you kidding what do you really want and then I kept looking for the the axe to fall or the trap door to open and it almost did once but you know what God turns it all for good and let me tell you something something new is going on here God is anointing whomsoever he will. And we're going to work together. And that's going to be the hallmark of the grand finale. It's not one superstar or two or ten or a hundred. No. Would that all, Moses said, would that all God's servants would be prophets and prophesy. Because of the, 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 the two fellows that, that got excited and, and they were prophesying and Joshua said, Moses, Lord Moses, please shut them up. He said, no, hey, it's no threat to me. Servant leaders. And I began to be attracted to men and women like that. And then I met, I met a, a great servant leader like Governor Mike Huckabee, who's the same at breakfast at the breakfast table or in the at the McDonald's in Masada when we're just eating big plates of french fries which we shouldn't do or he's just the same as if he's in front of millions of people same he just that 
was refreshing. I didn't think it was possible. Are you kidding? It's the greatest show on earth. And then there's the rest of the time where you run and hide so that, so that you don't get shot by friendly fire. <laughs> and I got shot a lot of times with so-called friendly fire. So I was wounded. I was hurt. I was broken. I didn't want, I, I tried to quit ministry when I was, I see I'm going a whole different direction today. I, forgive me, I, you know, well, that's all right. I keep remembering, oh yeah, no vaudeville hook. Uh, uh, yeah. ah! No. Because God said, I'm going to give you that which is your own. You won't have to build on another man's foundation. Although I am called to build and help others' foundation. I, that's in my heart. I want to do that. And if you have the Lord in you, you want to serve. And if you, do you want to be really great? I mean, great in the kingdom. You want to do something for God? You just go down as low as you can. Not in a false humility thing. I'm so humble. No, forget about yourself. Don't even think about yourself. Just go and be a first class servant full of the love of God and love each person like they're Jesus whether they're cleaning the toilets or they're or they're have a, a worldwide uh, uh, fame or something like that and I tell you the Lord hooks up with that every time and God is so eager to exalt you did you know that he wants to lift you up he wants to bless you God wants to increase you in every way. He wants you to rise up in the fullness. And, and nobody, you don't have to, by you, I tell you one thing, tearing people down will never lift you up, ever, ever. You'll just go down in the mud with them, that's all. Maybe you cause some temporary damage by, to people that, you know, by slander, or use your mouth, and, discord things like that which is why it's such a sin it you keep your mouth off of especially leaders man they they're under so much pressure it, the you know when i began to understand how severe satan's war machine is that was come and how it tried to destroy me my whole life i began to have mercy on christian and people in authority, Jewish leaders, people that, and the, the great ones, they are 24 seven servants. They never come out of their role ever, like Mike, or like Pat Boone. I said, when I grow up, I wanna be like you, Pat, and Shirley Boone, that man, what a prince. And I kept thinking, that's not real, come on. But I'm gonna watch them for a while. And that's what sinners do to you. That's what people all around you, they look at you for a long time sometimes just to see, <laughs> okay, so what do you really want? Because they've been done in. You haven't been done in until you've been done in by a well-meaning Christian. Then you've really been done in. Be careful. In fact, I tell people, I say, if you're gonna go into business, don't go into business with a Christian, at least until they grow up and mature. Find some gnarly old Jewish guy that works hard and has integrity. <laughs> you wanna, I tell you what, you wanna go to court? Don't get a Christian lawyer, get a Jewish lawyer. <laughs> if you wanna win, do you wanna win? <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. I'm just saying it in, in the sense of, <clears throat> you know, it's time for all of us to grow up. And the more we forget about ourselves, and I haven't attained, believe me, every day, God's correcting and showing me, ah, 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 no, no. <laughs> I keep practicing though. I keep practicing. Put off the old man and put on the new man. <laughs> Just keep putting off that old man. That's not you. That fellow died when you were born again. Let Jesus rise up, the, the love person in you. Let that rise up in you. 
and watch what God does. Because after a while, you'll look around and you realize, wait a minute, I'm not in the chicken coop anymore. I used to be pecking down here. Now I look, I got big wings. Wow, look at this, I'm soaring. Who's flying with me? Eagles. And you start growing up and you don't even know it. And then God can trust you and give you real authority. And authority comes, it's all about fathering and mothering and loving the little ones, the dear ones. God said, don't ever forget the little ones. How you receive a little one, a new believer, a, 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 or just some, someone that's growing. You know, we're all growing. But treat everybody like that's Jesus, but also that's a little one. That's somebody, and you you be a good daddy or mommy to somebody. And God will always send you people that will either be, they'll be like Paul, Paul to Timothy. Remember I said this before. You're a Timothy, they're a Paul. They're over you in a sense. But you, you go treat them, and they'll start, then the love of Jesus will flow through you, and, and that's the fastest way to mature. You want exaltation? That's what everybody seems. Oh, I am. I want to be somebody. <laughs> that's the way the world acts, but that's not the way. That's not the way up in the kingdom of God. I tell you what, the greatest servant I've ever seen in at least the part of the body that I'm in now, uh, maybe ever. I know two or three like it. I think the greatest man of love I ever, ever, uh, he was an apostle, but nobody knew him on earth. They know him in heaven, I guarantee you. He's a great king in heaven, but his name was Reverend Lauren Helm. He was the one of the greatest message I ever heard about loving people and obeying like a little child, just serving others. And that to me was the greatest uh, example of Jesus I've ever seen in a human being other than somebody like, you know, that we don't know, you know, that through history or, but personally that I sat and listened to. And maybe the second greatest lady I've ever, ever uh, seen, a woman of God, is Heidi Baker. I got to play for her a few times. What a privilege. All I could do when I saw her was just kiss her hand like she was the queen she is. Yet she's totally lost her life in the sense. She serves everybody. She falls on the floor before she speaks and into a, a puddle of worship. <laughs> uh, and, and yet, see, start looking. Ask God. Ask God to open your eyes and be able to see treasure and greatness in others and you'll be surprised who he points out who he says this one i say that one what you know sometimes i'll meet somebody and there's such there's such a, a they're in such a place in the spirit i say who are you <laughs> because there's something there there's a there's there's a see when jesus really takes over He's a king. He's a great. <laughs> the most authority I've ever seen in a human being, authority, was a man that I met in a in a in our friend's house, the Wilson's house, Bill and Connie Wilson, in uh, in Jerusalem, in the overlooking the old city. We go there, love them. They're beautiful. But it was a man visiting. There's always people coming in and out of there. Oh my goodness, great! You know who's who in the kingdom just waltzes through their door usually in a week. It's amazing. And why? Because they have probably the greatest gift of hospitality in I've ever seen. Uh, and they, are, they have a gift of hospitality for the leaders in the body and their connectors, especially Connie. Connie's a great connector. Anyway, so I'm there and I hear this, this man uh, who was visiting, he had a, a real strong English accent. I heard him before I saw him. He said, Connie, I want biscuits. 
I said, what? And it sounded like a lion. What is that? And this man comes in, tall man, uh, and he, he says, hello there. My name is Cannon um, White. He was a, uh, uh, for a while, I don't, th I think he's, he's no longer as active as he was. He's getting older now, but what was his first name? Andrew White. I sat down, I couldn't say a word. And he was saying silly things and goofing around. Then he'd say something. And it was like, I literally felt like I was, that this could be like the Apostle James, you know, Yaakov, James in the Bible. It was apostolic, man. And that was the real thing. The only other time I felt that was another, uh, was a pastor from Sweden who I sat under for a long time. He gave a message once in Brno, Czechoslovakia, and I was on the front row. It was a Bible school he had started. It was early 90s, mid 90s maybe, mid 90s. And I'm sitting there, and he starts talking about the gift of righteousness. And he begins talking about John Hus, uh, the, the great reformer, and how he was burned at the stake right here. And then he started talking about righteousness. At, right out of Romans and that it's a gift and it cannot be earned and I literally felt at one point a big broadsword just wham just hit hit me felt like it cut me in two <laughs> like, excuse me uh, uh, and I trembled I just trembled from the top of my head to my feet never had I felt such authority except in those two human beings and it was only for a short time. But I tell you, you start, you start treating everybody. The King of Kings is in this. This is a person that Jesus shed his blood for. Don't judge them. Don't touch them with a 10 foot pole. You just honor them. I don't care how they act. It doesn't matter. It's how you act that matters. If you want God to exalt, you start noticing authority. And it'll come out in a lot of funny ways. You won't see it. You won't see it with your net. You have to ask God to, to open your eyes. You know why the Laodicean church stays wretched, poor, miserable, blind, and naked according to the testimony of Jesus and yet believes they have everything? Remember that? You know why? Because they can't see. They're blind. They're deceived. Why are they deceived? They need to buy of Jesus' eye salve. When the Lord comes to you, when Jesus comes to you in this life, he never comes in his glory like a, like, or pomp. He never comes in like the high and mighty, ever. The Holy Spirit's a gentleman, and he'll hide his glory. He'll hide. And I tell you what, you want, what you want to do is just like Abraham. Remember when Abraham, remember when the three men came to him out of the desert? Abraham, you know what he saw? He saw the Trinity. He saw God. He knew that was God. And he said, you bake them, the, I mean, you make them the, the fatted calf. You do whatever, you, Sarah. You make up the feast like you've never made before. I'm going to bless. You have to spot where the blessing is and then, hallelujah, sow into it at all costs. Give, get, just hit the deck in your heart. Just say this, oh Lord, I honor you. You so honor whenever you see him. And he always rides in on the unexpected. You never know. You never know. And he loves to hide. He'll come in different ways. Most of the time, he's not even noticed, not even rewarded. Most of the great men and women of God, most of them are on the mission field or they're in the inner cities or they're in prison or they're, uh, you know, a few of us are called to, to, uh, to be on a platform to help and to, to equip 
others. That doesn't make them greater. It doesn't mean that you're a movie star, you know. No, movies, that, that, is, that is totally the wrong way to go. You, you wanna get God's attention, you go, find, you go find the most hurting person in your world and you treat them, you roll out the red carpet for them. You, you pour out your life and don't judge them. You know, sometimes we've had people that have hurt us deeply, you know, really, really hurt us. We gotta go real deep in the God so he can heal our broken hearts. And we can't hold on to it, we have to forgive. And when God forgives, he forgets. And then, let me tell you what the faith walk is. Then you treat them just like they never did it. Like it's gone. I don't remember that anymore. And you make a decision. I'm not gonna remember what you did to me. It's over, it's under the blood. I'm going on, I forget it. You know what? Well, I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. <clears throat> but you have to let Jesus do it in you. <clears throat> I'm just staying in this flow. I, I couldn't even get out of it. I hope you don't mind. But even if you do, uh, this, this is good stuff. This is rocket fuel for the overcomers. This is, this is, this is breakfast of champions. This will make you into, into the people you used to admire. All they did was give it all away. That's all they did. They're nothing special. They're ordinary people. Ordinary, most of them probably are worse than then like some people, a few people have talents, natural abilities, but you know what? Those kind of people, God requires more of them. So take what you have and just, just be like peanut butter, spread it all around. Just give it all away. I dare you try, try to do it. You know how many times I emptied my wallet by God's grace during those years? I tell you where I learned to trust God was when I was, uh, after, uh, after I was suicidal and then I, uh, for a year and I couldn't take care of myself in 86 and then, and then I, suddenly I was in this dirty old apartment uh, on 83rd Street. Uh, I could only afford 300 a month, so I was sharing it with this man who was really depressed and on so much medicine and he never cleaned up and I didn't know how to clean. And I was freelancing, but I had prayed enough to where I got back up, I was surviving. But I didn't have enough money. I, it was impossible for me to live. And yet somehow, and I didn't know how to cook. Now that's a big problem because I never cooked. Plus the, 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 the kitchen was so filthy, I couldn't even go into it. Oh, it was awful. This is 87. It was here that I learned how to trust God. I ate out three meals a day for nearly two years with no money. And you know what God had me doing? I listened to tapes all day long and pray in tongues. And then after a while, I'd get to the place where, you think I'm extreme now? You should have seen me then. Oh my goodness, I didn't have any sense. But the only person I, only people I could reach was the, uh, they had just released like about a hundred, <clears throat> hundred people from Bellevue <clears throat> that were in the mental hospital, that most of them were Vietnam vets or they, or people that had come out of, you know, they were nuts and they were on the street and they would each get their uh, manhole, because in those days, the subway had steam coming out of it. It's way back when. <laughs> and it was cold. So they would, they, they was, every block or so would have uh, someone drunk and on drugs uh, sitting on a wine. I, I remember this one time, and you know, I, I was in the middle of this crazy thing. There was a guy, I, I was on my way to the psychiatrist, okay? This was in 86. That was the first great miracle I ever saw God do through me. 
great miracle. I mean, creative type, you know. <laughs> I, I was, because it's grace, you know. It's all grace. It's not us. It's Jesus in us. So I used, I started to have, I started, I looked at this one man and he stunk the high heaven. He stunk so bad of urine and, and waste and filth and, and alcohol. And he was on East 80, sorry, East 79th Street in Lexington, okay? I had to pass by this guy. And so I, I would just, just because it, it was so bad, I'd go on the other side of the street. It smelled so awful. One day, the Lord spoke to me. And I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to keep myself together. And uh, just walking, I had a short walk to the doctor's office. So uh, he says, that $20 you have in your wallet? Yes, the $20 that I have for dinner tonight at Empire Szechuan. Sometimes God would always give me money. I'd find it, I'd get a job, I'd get some sort of playing job. And, but I was a mess, okay? But I still kept, I was, in the word of faith all the time, all the time. I was desperate, you understand? God said, go over to that man. I've been praying in tongues so much, you know. He said, don't avoid him. Say hello to him. I had to hold my nose. Hello. And he was staying warm. He had this filthy blanket on him. And I looked, and then I realized what it was that smelled so bad. It wasn't, it wasn't just the, uh, the outside. There was a, there was, he had a gang, he had a withered arm, a withered arm. It was green, it stunk, it was, it was decaying, and it was all shriveled up. Just like it says in the Bible, the woman with a withered hand, this man, had no use of his arm. It was atrophied and it was green and it stunk to high heaven. It stunk so bad. You know what God said to me? He said, go buy him beef and mixed vegetables. What you are going to eat. Because if you give him that $20, he'll go right around the corner and get ripple but he's starving, okay? So, and he, so I did. I mean, it was so clear. I mean, God could have had a megaphone. I mean, I knew, you know, you don't do this out of, I wonder if that was God or not. Well, you pray in tongues enough, you'll find out when God talks, he, you can hear him. <laughs> and that's, a, this is where I learned to hear God. I learned to trust God. That's how I learned how to live by faith. So anyway, I did. I brought it to him. And you know, he hadn't he had just a few teeth in his head, but he smiled. Oh, thank you. He I, I I sat there, I held my nose, but I watched him eat and he devoured it. And I gave him a soda as well, you know, whatever drink. He said, treat him just like you and me. I said, Yes, sir. And then he actually tried to get up and thank me, but he couldn't because he was crippled. And God said, go hug him. I said, I can't, I can't, I'll throw up. It's so awful. Hug him. So somehow I managed to not, not throw up. But since my stomach was empty, there was nothing in there anyway much. But so then I'm, I'm, I'm enhancing it some and I'm in, not lying, but I, I'm not exaggerating exactly, but I'm just going very slow. So you can understand, I go back and I experience it. I don't know why, but I'm right there. This man, then God said, pray for his arm. I'm gonna give him a new arm. I said, okay, yes, sir. Again, it's the word of the Lord. 
this is a gift of the Spirit. This is a miracle, working miracles. It happened. I didn't, I, this just, this was Jesus in me. We have to learn that Jesus is in us. Yeshua is in us. So I prayed for him and I very nearly did throw up that time because I had to touch him and I didn't want to touch him. Oh, it was disgusting. But I watched Jesus and this man. <laughs> that hand and arm turned from green and God put flesh on it black and and just and it, and then he started healing him I didn't I never saw him on the street after that he was there every day nearly when I'd go to the appointment you know this didn't take a lot of time uh, physically but it was like it was in slow motion I saw God give that man that everybody despised and God said Jesus said you did that for me and that's when the healing ministry began really because I had a healing anointing from then on I was 87 I wasn't even in ministry I wasn't even I don't know I was a broken young man just hanging on, trying to, trying to stay out of jumping off the bridge. That's it. Just let God, see? That's why I can tell you something. He is a miracle working God. You can't tell me like that man, John MacArthur. God doesn't do miracles anymore. Too late. I saw it. God hadn't changed a bit. It's your unbelief is why the mountain doesn't move. It's your unbelief while the sick what? Yeah. And you know what? I began to realize, man, I got a lot of growing. There's a lot that, you know, we have to overcome. But sometimes God releases grace. And you know, the supernatural and tongues are directly connected. And that's what I've been trying to get to tonight. But honestly... Well, you know what? Where are we at? We Oh, I started at six. May I go? I'm going to go now into, yes. I'm just, you know what? I'm just flowing. Uh, this is such a one. This is a revival flow. I mean, I'm telling you, it, it's powerful. You can get set on fire. You don't have to stay the same after tonight. God sure wants, God is ready to transform you into an end time worker. What are you so scared of? Go all in. Put it all out there. Say, all right, God. Either you're real or you're not. Because if you don't take care of me, I don't know where my next meal is coming from. Have you ever lived that way before? I did for two years. It always came. Always. And very often, I started all that by saying, I've given my last dollar out of my wallet many dozens of times. That's not an exaggeration. Dozens of times. Everything I had. And usually it was to somebody who, who could never repay me. And that's where I learned you cannot, you cannot give your last dollar. And this happened every time. If I needed to eat, and I ate well. I had, the, I, I made maybe $10,000 a year. That was what was on my tax return because that was all the freelancing I was, I, 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 I would get some music jobs and I lived whatever. So I, I you know, I, but I would always get, I had enough and God would multiply. Sometimes the amount in the bank account would change and nobody put anything in it. <laughs> except God. He just changed the number. It's uh, it's 8.30 and you have ATM. What is my balance? You remember when you had to go to the ATM? I had, that was, yeah. what is the balance? You have $34.73. <laughs> well, 
Well, I guess it's time for my last meal. I'm gonna take this, I'm like the widow woman and her son. I take this, these two sticks and this oil and the cruise and a bit of meal and I'm gonna have my last supper and then I'm gonna die. <laughs> well, no. Then I'd come back, say, and I'd have, I'd go to Zavar's and have my muffin and my fresh orange juice. And I'd, I say, what's, you know, might as well just go all out. I just, whether I, whether I pay, and New York City, Upper West Side, even then is expensive. So I ended up paying about $10, $20, even for breakfast, just a, a continent, whatever you call it, because the coffee. Well, I said, well, you know what? I'm gonna get locks and bagels. Might as well just spend the whole thing. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's gonna be my last meal. Well, at least I'll enjoy it and then I can die. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm exaggerating a little. But, things would happen. Unusual things would happen. Because first of all, I would always tithe. Tithe was, I learned all about that from hours of Kenneth Copeland. And I began to live by faith and I was partnered with him, you know. Still am, I'm still his partner. Why, you, you like, yeah, I do. Is, is he for real? Yes, he is. <laughs> Do you like everything that comes out of his mouth? Not always. He's a specialist. He's called to teach in a certain, and equip in a certain area. And that's all right. You know, even a monkey has enough sense to realize if he has one banana in his hand, in his left hand, hand, if you will, paw, whatever, and he has no banana in his right hand, he realizes one banana is better than no banana. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, so anyway, I really got carried away today. I hope you don't, you, you don't get impatient with me. But So what I'm trying to say is this is not just some religious theory for me. I've lived it, I've been there, I know. But money would come in all kinds of unusual ways. I'm talking, to, I'm telling you right now about end time provision. What if the trucks can't get into your big cities and you can't eat your sirloin ribeye or whatever steak anymore? You can't, you can't go to the Costco and get, you know, 40 rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> what if? All of a sudden, no food on the shelves, no water. What are you gonna do? Well, first of all, most of the world lives that way right now. Did you know that? They have no clean water and they don't have enough food. And they certainly can't go to the, go to the Walmart. And if they could, they, they only make about $1.20 a month. So how could they afford it? What are they gonna do? Well, you got to see, we didn't grow up that way. We don't know what deprivation is. We are in the land flowing with milk and honey. And the poor here are not really poor. Even the wino isn't like the untouchable in India. You want to see poverty? I don't actually. It's, it's, it's so heartbreaking, but I know enough. I know people that do minister there and to me, they're heroes. You know who does that? Hallelujah. The Morrisons do that. And I esteem them so highly. Furthermore, they're they're a part. I bet I bet she's Cheryl. I bet she's watching. She always she tunes in. They do that. That's awesome. You know. And we're not all called to be missionaries, but you are called to go into your world. You're the only Jesus that can reach your world. You've got to let him out and give him away every way you can, all the time, 24 seven, wherever you are, you're a light in the darkness. You're a voice in the wilderness. You're rivers in the desert. You've got the answer. You've got the antidote for the poison of eternal death. You have life in you and you owe a debt of love to go into all your world and 
preach the gospel, get them saved, get them healed, provide for them, visit them in prison, go to the, and you know what? I'm just as selfish as you in my flesh. I'm worse than you. I told you that 70 days ago. But nevertheless, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And you know what? There is a realm. But what I did not expect is the level of joy I am living in right now. Never been here before. Why? Because I went to another level in giving it all away. God said, do it every day. I'm doing it every day now. And my God, it's heaven on earth. Why didn't I do this before? Stupid. I was deceived. I didn't realize. I forgot. I forgot what it was like to survive one meal at a time. I forgot. And how would, oh, and God was so creative. Sometimes, you know, I would have given away my meal to my friend on the, on the west side who God had me feed him most of the time or, or he would have me, he, he'd tell me to sew and sometimes to KCM or sometimes, I, and very rarely did I have more than about enough for the next meal. <laughs> I'd, and sometimes it happened all at once, sometimes it happened over a week's period of time, but I learned how, I learned how to give and harvest. I learned how to sow and reap. So that's how I lived all these years. A lot of people don't know, and I don't talk about bragging. I, I'm, I'm, I'm determined to be bigger givers than any of you. If you give, that obligates me to give more. <laughs> Why? I'm not going to let you outdo me. But, I, but I'm getting, I'm, you know what? I'm getting tested. It's good. It's good. It's good. Life is good. But anyway, so he, uh, <laughs> what was I saying? Why are you talking about money? So I don't know. I don't know. I'm not talking about money. Oh, God. I'm not talking about money at all. I'm talking about how God provides and how real he is. And that how God, I saw, I'm talking about miracles right now. Miracles. You know why a lot of us in America and the church don't see the miracle working power of God? Because we never get out far enough into the deep to launch out. We never go all in. We always have our backup. Please, please, Lord. I've got this three million invested. I'll give a nod down to that last three million. Don't touch my stocks and bonds. Don't touch my gold. It's mine, and you'll never have it. <laughs> you, I'll give everything down to that last 2.5 million. But after all, I have, you know, I worked hard for this. That's my nest egg. Well, now I'm not saying that's wrong, okay? I'm saying if God doesn't have access, and I'm not asking, I, I'm talking about that because America's in love with money, not because I'm trying to get something. Most, most of the church is serving money and is in love with money, and especially the pastors and the leaders. That's why we're in the backslidden condition we are. You never came out of Babylon. You don't really, you haven't abandoned. No, I'm not talking to everybody. I'm talking about many. Most of the church ministry system will do anything to get their money. I refuse to do it. Well, why do you take offerings? Because I've learned that's the quickest way to get God's provision to you. And God wants to increase you. And it works. And not only does it work, it makes God happy. <laughs> and I like obeying God and making him happy. Oh. Well, maybe, maybe you're stuck and maybe somebody, you need to forgive somebody that abused you. And 
took money from you or stole or something. I'm not doing that. Never. Never. You can't buy me. I'm too expensive. And you certainly can't buy my mouth. It's not for sale. I've walked away for more than you could ever know. And I'm happy about it because what I got is the pearl of great price. I'll never compromise again. But I tell you, I had to get in the fire for God to burn all that, all that stuff out and I'm still in process. I haven't arrived yet. But most of all, others, others, others. You've got to give everything away. All the people say, well, if, if only I, I, you know, how many Christians called ones? I mean, you know, special forces level. I mean, called Oral Roberts University. These are students called to be in the, in the ministry of God. And then Rhema. You know how many waiters, I, I, waitresses I met in the restaurants around Tulsa that went to Rama were called into all the world and got discouraged and quit and said, well, this is a nice place to have a family. And I probably paid a number of their tuitions. Well, I remember one time, and this man right now is in China. Glory to God. He went full time. This guy, I was sitting there and I just got back from a ministry trip and, and uh, I had a lot of cash in my pocket. <laughs> and I was just on my way to put it into the bank. Remember when there was real money? You know, you actually put in, you know, like hundred dollar bill type, you know, and when people used to buy things with, with something other than ones and zeros. Remember that? Yeah. Well, this was back then. Well, so I had just, you know, I was hungry. I had to eat. And so I went to, I remember where I was. I was, I went to the Olive Garden at 70th and Memorial. It's probably still there in Tulsa. And I, I had lunch and I had several thousand dollars that I had was getting ready to deposit. It was a two or three week ministry trip. And so I'm, I'm sitting there and this man, young man comes up and he says, uh, what would you like? You know, I said, well, I'll have, usually I got spaghetti and meat sauce with mushrooms, which I usually get. <laughs> so I said, I ordered that probably. And so I'm sitting there, he walks away and I saw, I saw the anointing all over him. It was like a light that lit up, like a neon light all around him. He said, wow. And God said, he's about to be kicked out of Rama. He's a Rama student. He's starting his second year. This was in late summer. And he, I've called him. He told me all about him. I called him into the mission field. He's going to do great things. Oh, I feel the power of God all over me right now. Woo! Thank you, Lord. In, in China, he's called to China. So I said, I'm gonna test this out. And then he said, well, well, he didn't tell me. He said, he said, I want you to help him. That's the first thing he said. I said, help him. Uh-oh, I should, I should have got that money in the bank. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. He was gonna do something like this. After all, God really, I did well, you know, it was, it was a great trip. I was looking forward to, you know, yeah, okay. Wow, I could relax a little. But, so God, so he comes up and I knew it was coming. But I said, you know what, that may have been me. I hope it was. Oh, so I'm gonna test it out. I said, I just said, uh, are you a Rama student? He said, yes, I am. I'm starting my second year. And I'm getting ready to go back to school. It's only in a week and a half. Looking forward to it. And God said, He's under so much pressure right now. He's, he's, if he doesn't make the deadline by tomorrow, and I happen to know that that was the dead, there was a special, there was a date where you had to get at least the first semester in, because they've been 
so many Christians had flaked out on them, so they finally said, you have to get your tuition in. But God, I, I looked at him and I heard myself say something and it jumped out of my mouth. And I was, I said, I didn't, I didn't mean to say that. It just came right out of me. I said, I'm gonna pay your tuition for this entire year, right now. This young man dropped the tray, fell on the floor on his face and started sobbing. He said, I only had a few more hours. If I don't have such and such amount in, and it was pretty, pretty hefty. It was, you know, it's a whole year. But no, God, God said a whole year. So I had him sit down, and God said, count it out for him. 100, 200, whatever it was. You're going to go on the mission field. You're going to win thousands. That man's life changed that day. See, that's what matters. And I tell you the joy that comes when you do those kind of things, it's worth all the tea in China. And I wanna, I'm gonna get back up to that level again, hallelujah. I wanna give secretly and I wanna give extravagantly. That's the highest way to give. Tzedakah is Jewish charity giving that is, let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing. The only reason I'm sharing that is, is because I want to show you. I want, I, God said, just give this to them so they understand how to start to get out there. I mean, is it risky? Absolutely. Will you die? Yeah, you, I've died a thousand deaths. Oh, it's scary. But you have to know, and what if I miss it? You will. <laughs> so what? God will cover for you. If you're always trying to love people, and you know what? I need to do more. I, I went back into my shell. I had a, you know, and I, I was back in survival mode and for a long time. But I've come out now. I'm a different man than the man that sat here in this chair 70 days ago even. I'm not even the same. I'm just not even the same. It's like God dumped seven times more on me from what I ever had before. And I'm I'm just trying to I'm just trying to stand up most of the time, just with this glory. Because this is love and action is where it's at. Finding, obeying, and giving extravagantly is where it's at. And that's what's going to bring in this final harvest. There's going to be a whole lot of Jesuses walking around doing the same works that he did in greater works. This is the realm where hands grow out. This is the realm where limbs are restored. This is the realm where uh, miracle wealth transfers, serious money. I mean, the real thing. Once God knows he can trust you, he'll start trusting you. Because he'll test you. I'll tell you one thing. Go, you know what God told me to do? Oh, here's a little, little thing. And remember, it's all about instantly obeying every leading of the Spirit. Here's a little thing God said to me. And I, again, this is not an ego trip. I'm trying to... I, I, God said, to, 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 if I'm not doing it, don't listen to me, Okay. If I'm not for real, turn me off now. I find somebody who is, okay? Because if I'm not real and I'm not bearing the fruit, then guess what? I don't want you deceived. I asked God to kill me so I don't hurt people. And he did when I was 17. He killed me on the inside. And I still, I, I, that doesn't mean I don't miss it. So, but my heart, God knows, I stand before, I am, I am, I am your servant right now. I will serve you. I will serve you. I will love you. I care. So anyway, uh, wow, the compassion hit me again. Glory to God. But whenever that compassion comes, that's when I see the miraculous. 
that's when I see it. But anyway, so you know what God asked me to do three days ago? And it was hard for me, okay? Every time you see mom, I want you to give her a hug and give her a kiss. Oh, oh mom, bless her darling heart. I love mom, but she's Devorah's mom. Can you imagine? Now she's 90. But the one thing I avoid at all costs is taking sides because it's like it was in the Lord of the Rings movie when Saruman got a hold of Gandalf's staff and then he turns both staffs on Gandalf and yeah, you don't want both of them ganging up. Oh no, oh no, you should run, run! Just, I say, I'm, and for years I've been like, I'm just joking, I'm just joking. I love them both, I do. But you know what family's like, don't you? Sometimes it's hardest to love those that are actually the closest. And God, and he said, every time you do, I'll diffuse, I'll, I'll, I'll drive out the fear and, and the fretting and the worry and, the, and all that stuff that, that's been afflicting her. And you know what? I said, all right, I commit to doing that. I don't care what I feel like. As soon as I see her, I'm going to go up and say, I love you, mom, and I'm gonna kiss you, and I'm gonna hug you. I, mean, I said that, and I, so I just, I just made a quality decision. I'm gonna do that from now on until she goes to glory. But my flesh was screaming, thing, screaming. Why, I don't know. And he was trying to get me to do that for years. And that's what she, that's all she needs. But I was so, you know, there's a reason why Jesus denied Peter three times. It's because he healed his mother-in-law. No, just that's a bad joke and I shouldn't say that. But my mother-in-law is going to get the love of Jesus in me from now on. So y'all pray for me. Thou hast asked a hard thing, Lord. There's a lot of, of exercise for your love muscle. This family test is the hardest. <laughs> I just, I just went, I couldn't even get to anything. I just been pouring out. I hope you've been blessed. I'm drunk in the spirit. What do you mean? The joy of the Lord is like wine, the finest of wine. I've been drinking the new wine and the old wine together. Hallelujah. <laughs> the real thing. You want, do you want power? <laughs> I want power. No, I mean, do you want supernatural Jesus power to come pouring out of you all the time? Just hook yourself up between the perishing around you in your world and God get a big fire hose and just put it in real tight because it's going to come out fast like a fire hydrant and then just go into your world and go <laughs> go find somebody to love and dump it all on them and you will get God's attention. He'll go, what was that? That's like, uh, that's like Paul and Silas in the jail when they were beaten and thrown in the stocks. And at midnight, they started singing praises, loud praises to God when they were at their very worst and everything looked like, looked like total defeat and failure. Can you imagine the devil screaming at Paul? You, you thought you had a vision. You, you missed it. Not only did you miss it, but you're never getting out of here. You, can you imagine? And he's exhausted. He's been beaten to an inch of his life. Both of them. What do they do? They start singing praises to God. And you know what? God the Father, if you will, looked over 
from the vanisher head. What's all that? What's that noise? What's that music coming? I hear singing. <laughs> so much uh, faith. That's faith. And God answers faith every single time. It's when you go out there so far, if God doesn't come through, you are sunk. Now, don't do it presumptuously, but do it in the love of God and, you know, do it according to, you know, I mean, use wisdom. I'm not saying be crazy like I was. I got myself in trouble a lot of times because I did get out there and God had to sometimes. It took a little while because <laughs> I didn't listen or I didn't get it quite right or I jumped out ahead because I was so excited. Well, you, you do grow, you get better at hitting the target, uh, following the leadings of the Holy Spirit. But one thing you'll never Get, if you don't ever get out of the boat, you'll never walk on the water. I'd rather be a wet water walker that God has, Jesus has to come and bring me back to the boat than a dry boat sitter. Just sitting there till I, in my view, and just with a bunch of dead religion and compromise and I'm safe. Yeah, you're also depressed and defeated and, and no power. And you're not you're not go you you haven't changed your world like you're supposed to you're on this earth to reach into your world and you must do it and i'm going to get on your blessed assurance with the fire of god until you get up and do it <laughs> uh, all right listen this was a total exhorting day i just couldn't get off good but you know what? Some of the greatest services I've ever been in were these kind. I remember sometimes, you know, I remember one service in Sweden that was so amazing. It was a, a Southern lady that taught on love. Uh, she was an intercessor and she had, I'm trying to think of her name. She had a little, she always had this uh, uh, handkerchief. She would wave like this. Like, um, oh gosh. Merck, Bobby Jean Merck, that was her name. She taught on the greatest love recite. And one time she got up and it was, it was in the Bible school, so it was a morning, and she just prophesied for an hour. I mean, just prophesied the word of the Lord. I mean, the Lord says, and she started and she never, and then she just stopped and she said, praise the Lord, hallelujah, amen, sat down. <laughs> for an hour oh my god you could cut cut out a chunk of the glory of god and put it in your pocket and take it home with you it was heaven heaven was yeah we're gonna start having that kind god's gonna start talking really talking through his oxes and donkeys and ministry gifts and you because you're a believer hallelujah and you have jesus in you Will you please let him out into your hurting world? The sighing, dying, crying humanity that is just wants a drop of water from, from the river of life, just wants a crumb off of your table. Oh yeah. And what happens is the hose gets very happy when because it's more blessed to give than to receive. And when you get into this place where I'm gonna give on as massive a scale as I possibly can. I mean, give, I'm talking about your life, everything, and live for that. You know what, you, when you do that, I have to warn you, you are declaring war on Satan's kingdom and he will come after you. Oh yes, he will. You will suddenly receive a big giant poster in the galleries of hell, most wanted. Take him out. <laughs> well, well, a principality, may you, are you so dangerous to, to, uh, to his operation that he'll send a, a major principality to take you down like he did Paul yeah that's what that's what his thorn in the flesh was it wasn't an eye disease it wasn't uh, it was wherever he went riots 
and beatings, and he did overcome it. God's great. God didn't say, no, I'm not going to, will you please deliver me? He asked three times. He didn't say, no, I'm not going to deliver you. You suffer. <laughs> suffer. No, God's not God's will that you suffer for no reason. Sometimes we do suffer. And there is, there is a mystery in suffering. I understand that. But I'm talking about Paul's thorn in the flesh right now. It wasn't that something God sent to him. That's, it's not. It was something, he had such payload. I mean, he had the whole revelation of the New Testament uh, of grace in him. That's why Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. He didn't say, no, just endure it. He didn't say that. He said, take that grace and pull that thorn out. <laughs> he said, my grace, I've already given you everything you need to shut this whole, uh, this, this, this uh, stirring up of riots and, and, you know, shipwrecks and all that. He got to the place where it didn't happen to him anymore. In fact, at the end of the book of Acts, while well, he was thrown in prison, well, yes, God used that time. But then finally, he wasn't in prison anymore. Or he was in, he was, he said, finally, the end of the book of Acts, which the book of Acts never ends. It's, we're still in the Acts of the Holy Spirit. I should say that instead of the Acts of the Apostles. I mean, it was the Acts of the Apostles, but, and everybody, and all that followed, every generation. There's still supernatural acts of the Holy Spirit. It was the work of the Holy Spirit through the church, through the believers. So it says in the end of the book of Acts that, that he, Paul lived in his own rented house. And the last sentence, it says, and uh, all of his acquaintances and friends and disciples, everyone could come to him and they did. And what did he do? He preached the kingdom of God all day long and all night long, probably. He went all in. Well, he was Paul, yes. And he was very special, yes. There's no, but he's, Jesus was our example, not, he wasn't the one and only. He is the one and only son of God. But everything he did in obedience to the Holy Spirit, he did as a man, a Jewish man, under the Abrahamic covenant, not by divine son of God, deity power. He had no miracle power at all until he had that baptism at, at, in the Jordan with John. That's when the Elijah mantle came on him. Of course, he was perfect. He never sinned. He, and he operated in the fullness no man will ever do as much as him, of course. But he didn't do a single supernatural miracle, raise the dead, feed the 5,000, anything. Withered hand, God used a suicidal, broken young man to do that. What can he do with you? only thing you need, the currency that gets heaven to earth, is faith. Faith comes through feeding on the good word of God. The substance of faith comes, and once it's inside of you, you got it. Now, does it stay? No, you spend it like you would gold coins or something, money in the bank, you know. And then you use that faith to help people and to win souls and to fulfill your ministry and to, and, and this is where increase, when God can trust you, when you start using the, uh, see, there is a, when I meditate on something, when you meditate on anything long enough, it finally drops inside of you. But when you get the word of God in you in abundance after you know, 
and, and you don't know exactly when it's gonna come. There's a point where Eureka, there it is. Don't pray to you get, there it is. I got it. You get it on the inside of you. Then you pray the prayer of faith and the mountain moves. Your words are coins in the kingdom of God. Your faith is the payment. And the grace of God is God's willingness. He's already given everything. He's already done everything. He's given it all to you. You now have it. You have everything you need right now. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it. Well, you, you <laughs> it's, uh, it's through the leadership of the Spirit. It's obedience. It's, but your purpose. First of all, you got to find your purpose. I used to say this, and I'm, I just... I'm just flowing. I'm almost done. I'm just going to have to sign off to that tonight. Forgive me. I didn't do it. I didn't even take receive the communion. You can receive communion. You know how to do it. We've done it for 69 days. <laughs> so you, you can do it. But I promise we'll, we'll, we'll go on. I, I got Holy Ghost interrupted. I just got overtaken. Forgive me. But that's good. I don't mind. I don't apologize for that, though. That's all right. It's helping you. I believe it is. Some of you, some, listen, this fire is powerful. It has totally transformed me in just a couple of months. I am not even this, I don't think the same. I don't, I mean, I'm in a level of revival, if you will, in my life that I have never experienced before. It is, I knew, I knew the end, the end times was going to be awesome. And that this, I knew this, I knew this glory would come. But I've stepped into it now. And God is giving me the privilege of pouring it on you. All you got to do is catch it and burn. That's all you have to do. Just take it. Take it. God wants you to have it far more than you do. <laughs> he wants to get heaven to you and through you into your world. He's after the perishing. He's after those. Remember William Booth's vision? He's after those lost at sea, perishing. He's after them. He's after all those that are stuck in their homes and they don't know God from a hole in the wall. You're the only hope they have. They're the only Jesus anyone will see. You've got to reach him. Oh, yeah. Well, does that mean I quit my job? Well, most of you had. <laughs> uh, God just eliminated that problem for a number of you. Now you got to live by faith. It's like, you know, sometimes I think uh, maybe the Lord is like Cortez, you know, when he came to, to the, the, the New World, you know. What did he do? All the conquistadors, and they weren't, I'm not saying they were all holy. Many of them were. They did bring the gospel, some of them. But... What did he do to motivate his conquistadors? <laughs> First thing he did after he landed, he set every ship on fire and it burned and it went blup, 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 blup. No way back to Spain, Pedro. Gonzalez, no way back. What are you gonna do now? <laughs> well, Good thing God's really there. Good thing he always keeps his promises. Good thing he never fails. Well, now you get a chance to prove it. What are you gonna do now? Believe God, like I always did. Nothing changed me. You know what? In some ways, I'm not, I'm not saying that, don't take this in the wrong way. In some ways, I've had most restful vacation. I've had a wonderful time. I haven't had to travel. Uh, it's hard to travel. You know, you ought to try traveling sometimes. It's not so easy. Now, I'm called. I have a grace to do it. But Devorah and I worked very hard. Uh, and I, 10 years before her, I did. You know, traveling is not easy. And I've been able to stay. And, and then the Lord just said, build me an altar right in your home. Build me an altar. I said, yes, sir. fire fell on it. Oh. I believe Nate Rafa broadcasts is changing the world.
and it's certainly changing the world I'm called to go into. And I'm not going to quit. I'm happy, and I'm going to run with this fire, and I love you. I have a debt of love to you that I can never fully pay. Because you are loved by God, relentlessly, fanatically, if you will. God is head over heels, teenage crush level, bonkers in love with you. And he let me just taste just a little eye drop full of the ocean of his love for you. And that's all I could take. And if he just puts another eye drop in me, I get, I melt on the floor again. <laughs> it's time for you to receive at least an eye dropper full. Let God love you. Let God fulfill you. For God's sake, for, Je for, 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 for your eternal reward's sake, will you please get up and do the dream God put in your heart? Will you do? Because I tell you what you're supposed to do in life. What am I supposed to do? What you love the most, that's what you're supposed to do. God makes it so he puts what he's called you to do be the thing that you love the most and you're most fulfilled doing. And it will always involve others, always. And it's in giving that, what you dream of doing, giving that into your world that produces the abundant life. We're not all called to do the same thing. Some people love, love to serve people as a mechanic. Some people are a doctor. Some people are called to be, uh, you know, a scientist or, a, or an engineer. Some are even called to do, uh, you know, what they call blue collar. There. But I tell you what, <laughs> nowadays you could make more money uh, and, and be, you know, you know, a welder makes a better living than a teacher. That's, that's crazy. I think musicians should make as much as basketball players. Don't you? I sure do. <laughs> but, or whatever, we have a very strange culture. But, you know, your employment is what your, your assignment, what you're called to do. You don't have to punch a clock. You have to do what God asks you to do. What did God ask Abraham to do? I always say, when you do what Abraham did, you'll get what Abraham got. What did he do? He stepped out all in or all out on one word spoken to him personally from the mouth, mouth of God on the vision God gave him. God said, leave and go. Leave <clears throat> your family, your kindred. Leave uh, the, you know, lead the moon god town and go to land I'll show you. And he showed him the whole plan of redemption. He, according to the book of Hebrews, he saw Messiah, he saw his day, Yeshua said, that's the millennial reign, and he saw the city. He said he looked for a city whose builder and maker was God, and he just sojourned. His whole life he never saw the fullness of the promise. We're still waiting for the fullness of the promise to Abraham, but because it said Abraham believed God. If he said it, he swore in blood. He, he said, my son, my descendants will be like the stars of the sky and the sand of the seashore. That's it. That's the truth. And he believed it so much that he believed that Isaac was his heir and would inherit the promise. He said, God's going to raise him up from the ashes. If I, but if God said, kill my son, my only son, then I'm gonna do it. And then he didn't just start to act on it. Well, what did he say when he started? 
He went on the journey. I'm going three days journey, honey. I'll be back. We, and we will return. That's Isaac and Abraham. In other words, he believed it was already done. When you believe in a place called done, that's when you receive answers to your prayers. And there's no faking it. You have to believe for real. Or guess what? There's no electricity to toast your toast. <laughs> it just doesn't work. It's just mental ascent. It's just, you just, you're, you know. But, but again, meditate on God's word for you and the calling he gave you because all of, all of your inheritance is in that. All the blessing and the provision is in your calling, whatever that is. Whether it's, it, you know, and if God assigns you to go to the Walgreens and, and be at, at the checkout for, you know, I'd like you to work here. Yes, sir. Okay. And you know what? You go. And guess what? God will take care of you at the Walgreens or wherever. But he'll assign you. He'll, he'll put you somewhere. And you will get happy because he makes you joyful in his will. That's the only place to be happy. I'm so happy. Why? Because I'm in his will right now. In some ways for the first time in my life. You know what? God had called me. He did say go full time. He said play. He didn't say play the violin first. He said minister and perform for me in that order. And you know what? I got intimidated. I leaned just on the violin gift, which is, and I know, and, and it's important. It's a weapon. It's, it's very, very important. But the time has come now. I've got to be me. I've got to do. And I have been set aside for God for the midnight hour and the grand finale. This is what I've prepared my whole life for right now. And, uh, I don't care what anybody says, I'm not gonna stop. Now, if I get thrown in prison or something, or, uh, you know, uh, see, that's what happened to great men, saints or whatever, down through history. They became so dangerous that even their brethren, so-called, through religion, started persecuting them, and they got so bad, they couldn't stand it to be in their presence because the power was so strong and it convicted them. So what did they do? Burn them at the stake, flay them alive, put them on a rack. You know, what did they do? They just kept preaching. Now I pray, I don't want that to happen to me, but I, I haven't been trusted with that level of power yet. I have, a, I have what I have, but it's increased, my goodness. And the one thing I'm surprised at is so far, nobody's run me out of town. <laughs> well, you can't because you know, you can get mad and, and, and turn me off, but we live in the sweet land of liberty. Thank God, I pray we keep this liberty. But I will prophesy to you and tell you, power is getting turned up and persecution is coming to the church in America. You can't even meet in a lot of places. See, Satan's trying to keep us from getting together, but actually what's happening is he can't stop. He can't stop this wonderful, uh, tool we have that God's using for good ultimately will trap all of mankind but you see the power of the internet right now we just shifted into the end times to a whole nother level in the last last 80 days you know what it is we are now almost totally 100% dependent on the world wide web it's a web and it's a trap. And as soon as grace is removed from this earth and the bride is taken home, it will, it will fall like a bear trap. It'll go shink like this. And you will be totally controlled. All your liberty will disappear. But until that time, oh no, oh no, 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 uh-uh. Even if that happens, you can't stop this. You can't stop God. He's gonna have his will. He's already won. You know what? You wanna really, really go up the elevator about 50 floors? 
Start rejoicing when you get persecuted. Then you'll get somewhere near where they were in the book of Acts. <laughs> we don't understand that. I don't. I haven't arrived there. But I'm telling you, whenever the darkness grows greater, God starts turning up his power, his glory. His glory in you is greater. His grace is sufficient. It's greater. Oh yeah, you're going to make it. Oh yeah, why don't you start agreeing with God instead of doubting him? Let's start believing him. How many things can you do through Christ who strengthens you? Well, some things. No, all things. God's in you. What is it that God cannot do? All you have to do is do what he wants you to do and you can choose. You can do it in your own power or you can do it in his power. Why don't you just just stop, just surrender, just all, everything, all my time, every moment, every second are yours and others. That's it. I don't, I, I give it all away. And that's where it's at. That's where all of these treasures are. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to just keep speaking it into you until finally the, the light dawns. Eureka, the light. Oh, I, I, God's in me. Yeah. Why don't you let him out and do something? <laughs> His will. And get happy. That's why you're so miserable. You haven't let God do what he wants to do out of you fully. Maybe. Maybe some of you, I know some of you have. I'm not getting on you there. But I tell you what, take the lid off. Take the lid off and stop jumping only this high. The fleas, you know, the fleas, the train. They, they, they hit the thing long enough, then finally, I'm not going to jump that high anymore. I'm not going to hope anymore. I'm not going to dream anymore. I'm just going to, oh, well, when we all get to heaven someday. No. Start living in heaven now. Start doing the impossible. Dan, dan. Why do we like why do we like those Mission Impossible movies and stuff like that? We see our heroes, superhero doing impossible things. You know, this message will disintegrate in 30 seconds. Should you choose to take this assignment, Ethan? You know? Why do we get excited? Because we all know somehow there's a covenant God that wants to do, we're, we're created to do exploits for God. That's what we're created to do, the impossible. Hallelujah. But first you gotta start believing that you can. That's where, that's why we have to build you up. And I'm gonna get to that I want to talk to you about praying in tongues, but the reason I'm the way I am is because I pray in tongues a lot. And God had mercy on this wretched sinner and got me born again. I'm no longer a wretched sinner. I'm now a, a new man. And I began to believe what God says about me and his holy promises in the Bible more than I believe how I feel. And that's where dun, 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 the greater one begins to rise up. My people in the end times, they'll do exploits. They'll run through troops and leap over walls. <clears throat> the army of God, the bridal grand finale. Are you ready? Even if you're not, we're coming through. And you cannot stop us, Mr. Devil. I bless you. Boy, you guys must be praying or something. I just, it's just, <clears throat> oh, it sure felt good. Well, listen, I'm going to, oh, I want to tell you <clears throat> that about 1030 tonight, not too long from now, only a couple hours, maybe closer to 11 here on the, what, uh, on, uh, here on the West Coast. It's later where you are. I know I've kept some of you up, but, um, uh, <clears throat> Uh, I will pray for everyone. I don't know what I'm going to do 
when we keep growing because <laughs> it takes me about an hour now that's all right i will i will do at least an hour every night and i'm going but for now i can lift every one of you up to the lord and ask god to bless you and touch you and, and if there's a prayer request uh, i will agree with you and i don't miss one i if you write anything, if you post something on this, uh, maybe not on every every uh, post I've got on Facebook, but mainly this is where I'm pouring everything into now, focused on this. So, if you need prayer, you want something, you you just just put your name down and say hi, and I'll say hi to you back, and I'll pray, and if God gives me something uh, for you, uh, believe me, I'll I'll obey Him best I can. And then Paul said, pray for me. Gosh, will you do that? I'm out here. I'm willing to get on the front lines, and that's all right. And I'm doing fine. I'm in a bubble right now. I feel great. But I know I've seen the most wanted poster. I've seen it. <laughs> I'm a target. That's all right. That's good. You ought to make the devil panic give him a problem he can't solve. You're a champion, and I love you. All right. Abba Father, in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, I bless the dear ones. I bless all the people that you, <coughs> that <coughs> are under the sound of my voice right now, all of your people, even those that that need, haven't come into the kingdom yet. Lord, I lift them up to you. Have mercy on them. Father, bless all now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you. May he fill you with his fire and his glory right now. Hallelujah. May he give you his shalom peace in your life, your family, your ministry, your sphere and spheres of influence. Lord, bring shalom. I cast, I cast the devils out of your, your life right now. Go in the name of Jesus. The blessing of the Lord, the blessing of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob is yours through the precious blood of Yeshua. Hallelujah. And may the grace of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, be yours tonight and forever and ever. You are blessed and you cannot be cursed. You dwell in the secret place and you will not fall. Even if a thousand fall at our sides, 10,000, at our right hands, they cannot come near us. We are invincible in submission under his feathers, his wings. And may the Lord El Shaddai, the God of more than enough, provide more than enough for you. Provide for you everywhere you need it. Take the, yes, yeah, someone has been tormented and that's what depression is. It's fear. It's fear-based. I break the spirit of fear over you. Fear not. God said, fear not, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you. I am your God. Surely I will help you. Surely I will strengthen you. Surely I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. That means you're safe. And inside of his wonderful chamber, bridal chamber of love, secret place of the Most High, that's where I live. I dwell. I close the door. I'm staying here. Hallelujah. You, you got me now. You're stuck with me, God. Here I am. I'm getting as close as I can, and I'm going to stay here. That's it. And God says, Hallelujah. And I'm God saying Hallelujah to myself. No. No, he's, he's rejoices because... That's all he's ever wanted anyway, just to be with you, be your friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. So, 
Well, I tell you what, if I get any more on fire, I think I might just burn up in front of you, or not burn, or just explode or something. I so it's wonderful. Doesn't it feel good? Don't you feel better than when you tuned in today? I sure do. All right, so I'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing. Remember our healing room's prayer is, wow, it was anointed tonight. <clears throat> and uh, I'm coming on to help lead prayer as well on Friday. Uh, we different of, of the apostolic leaders and healing rooms. We, we, uh, we're coming on each night. I think Fred, uh, Fred and his wife, Fred Croft, uh, Pastor Fred, uh, he is, uh, He's leading it and putting it together. So uh, I will be on. And so that starts at five. So I'll start at six o'clock, Lord willing, tomorrow and every night through Pentecost now. So, so you, you're welcome to get a warm up and just come on in. And I'm listening. I'm praying. I'm, I'm. Let that language of tongues just flow out of you. Let God pray for you for a while. Why don't you just stop worrying? I, re I retired from worry and fear. I just said, I decided I'm just not going to do it anymore. God, you got a big problem. That's me. If you, if you don't, you don't get me through, I just, okay, well, I still, I know you'll get me through. Once you're fully persuaded, you, then you let it rest. You just cast your cares, just give it to God. That's not my problem. That's God's, that's God's problem. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Hallelujah. Jesus gave me one. It fits well. It's light. It's not a heavy bowling ball. No, all those rocks are what you put in your sack, not what God put in there. His yoke's easy. His burden's light. He's got an abundant life for you. It's not, it's not hard or pressing or, or you know, oh, I'm so, I'm carrying such a heavy load. Well, you put it in there yourself. Get the rocks out of you. Just do what God asks you to do. Stop doing everything else because you're afraid what your family might think or you're afraid or you're afraid of anything. Don't be afraid. If you don't, you know what? Let God drive, let the love of God drive out all fear from you. And you know what? You just stopped all access to Satan in your life. He cannot torment you if there's no fear. Fear pays Satan, gives him authority. Faith, faith pays God, if you will, and accesses grace in heaven. Faith and fear are opposites. Faith, a fear is faith in reverse. It's faith in the lies of the devil. Why do you believe what the devil's saying? Start believing what God's saying. The devil's a liar. So divorce him, cast him out. Don't listen to him anymore. Shut up. I like what Jesus said, one of the greatest prayers. It wasn't really a prayer, it was a command. He said, shut up and come out of him. So you gotta, you know what? Don't just be quiet, flee, resist him, submit to God. If you're not submitted to God, the devil will just stay right there and laugh at you. But if you're submitted to God, then you resist him and he is fleed. He's gone. No more. He's not your problem if you don't listen to him. All right, I got to stop now. You're still pulling on Some of you are just pulling so hard. <laughs> That's all right. You're, you're just hungry. You're, you're, and, and hallelujah. I got to go. Oh my goodness, I went a half hour over. Forgive me. Well, I don't want to ask for forgiveness, but I will try to be more diligent about that. I love you. See you tomorrow, Lord willing. Shalom, shalom. Five o'clock, prayer six o'clock. I'll come on our bait Rafa. Bless you. Good night.